Desert Palace Part Two. <laughs> are, you ha- are you happy? Are you happy right with that intro right there? Yes. The very first words that came out my mouth was Desert Palace. Hey, at least our viewers know what we're doing. Now. <laughs> <laughs> but no, this is a uh, part twenty-nine yep. of the Link Between Worlds, and as you guessed, we'll be going through the last part of the Desert Palace. I know, and I'm a. Uh... I'm a little sad because this was one of uh-huh. our favorite dungeons. Well, these uh, dungeons are not going to last more than two parts. That's so true. You, <laughs> so you better enjoy both parts when we get to them. I'll tell you what I enjoy is kind of loading up on rupees in this dungeon There's in a general. Lot. I mean, right off the bat, in this part, we get two of the silver uh-huh. ones. We've already gotten two or three other ones. Yeah, I don't know. We got. I think we got purple rupee two earlier. Probably. I don't remember, but like this is really the first dungeon because we got a little bit of rupees in Thieves Hideout, but yep. like this is kind of the first dungeon where you, in our opinion, you get a lot of them. So. I mean, it makes up for all those rupees we threw into the fairy fountain. Yes, which, I mean, like, like <laughs> rupees are very valuable, so it's nice to kind of, you know, I was... I was a little bit shocked, actually, that when we got to rent all the items, that there were still this many treasure chests yep. in the dungeons. Now, most of them, they have rupees, but, True. <laughs> you know, I was kind of like, when I read that idea, I was kind of like, well, there might not be many treasure chests at all, which is like, you know, an awesome part in Zelda yes, games. Yes, it really is. I think an awesome part of this particular Zelda game is this room right here. Yeah, the ballroom. I, the oh, ballroom, yeah, the as ballroom. You call it. <laughs> I love just like using the uh, sand rod uh-huh. to create pathways for these boulders or yeah. balls to break these blocks. I thought it was very, yeah. very well done. Just that little puzzle we had before this dungeon, and then all the puzzles in this dungeon. For some reason, I just liked like all the sand rod dungeons or not yeah. dungeons, uh, puzzles. I th- I feel like they were more creative almost. Uh-huh. I'm not sure if. if well, I don't know if it's creative. creative but it was like it was a new mechanic, and we had to talk about thing. this. It was a new mechanic that we not had in really any others. Well, I think in one of the DS games oh. there was something similar. I can't remember exactly which one it is, but maybe it was just kind of a new <laughs> mechanic that, like you know, which introduces obviously new puzzles. I think that's why I liked it because it was just all new to me. I think that's exactly right, and I forgot uh-huh. we never really talked I about that. Something. With the finally, it took yeah. me two years, <laughs> but I finally nailed something. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, it's one hundred percent correct though. It's just. It might not be that they're so much creative, it's just they're new for us. Uh-huh. And that's just mm-hmm. such a nice touch when you've played every Zelda game that there is. Yeah. It's nice to get something new. In that room right there we were just in, like, I mean, we talked about how the sand fill out the room makes it look cool, but oh, like, yeah. that room right there, it looks completely different than the first time we went in it. It really does, and I just like that effect. Again, like the sand being used similar to, like, water in previous dungeons or games, uh-huh. just filling up rooms. I'm glad they went that route. And another thing I really like is, um, but how we use the uh, the switches, like how we hit the switches yes. in this dungeon, like you know, usually it's us him with one of our items yep. or like with our sword. But in this dungeon, we use like those arrow walls, shooters, yep. whatever you want to call them, like to hit the switches. And then you can see right here that we use the BMOs to also hit those it. switches. So just a couple of different ways of hitting switches right there. Plus, anytime we can use the enemy, you know, against himself, like yes, we use yes, the enemy uh-huh. to hit the switches. You know, I don't, I don't think he's exactly fan. using it against himself. We're just uh, you know, that sounds good to me. We're using it to get yeah, in the yeah, dungeon. dungeon. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we're not really using it against him. Yeah, that, that's so, but close enough. I guess in a way we are because we're progressing through the dungeon. Exactly. He's supposed to be hitting and accomplishing our like our. You know, I went. Way too far <laughs> on that topic that was not important whatsoever. So how about this key we're going to get? <laughs> is it a key? Are you sure it's a key? Uh, uh, I, I think it is. I think it is. Fingers crossed. And I, I, for some reason it felt to me like there were more keys, to be honest, in this dungeon than a lot. I do agree. Like, I don't know how exactly how many there were, but I think like we've gone like four or five It has been. And it already, might just be so. because we're doing it earlier in the game. But yeah, well, it's also we're getting to the later dungeons, which yeah. you know I don't know how, which dungeons have how many keys. Oh, me neither. <laughs> but I would expect throughout the rest of these dungeons for all of them to start having more keys. But yes, I do agree with you. Yep. And speaking of like you mentioned, like using the BMOs to hit those switches, I really loved it there where it was switching between the blue and the red yeah, blocks. Uh-huh. I thought that was a really nice effect for you to get to that next. And that's platform. a good example right there of where the sand rod upgrade is very important yes. because, like, if you're on a timer right there, you got almost time that perfectly right yeah. there to get that BMOs to hit all three of those switches. It does make this dungeon just so much uh, not necessarily easier, but less frustrating. I feel like uh-huh, when you don't have that time limit. Yes, I mean for the sand rod. It's one of those upgrades, and we talked about how like some of the upgrades are just not that valuable. Yeah, the sand rod is one of those upgrades that is actually very valuable. I mean, even for this platform form right here I mean you'd have to go back and redo it every single basically uh uh, enemy there that we kill, and I forgot uh-huh. their name. Sorry. Uh, those jumpy things right there? Yeah. Or Gimos. Or Gimos. Gimos uh, G-I-M-O-S. I don't know why I continuously spell enemy names, but I think it makes it easier yeah. for people watching it. 
kind of know what the heck we're talking about. I don't know why you tell me the we name. Mis- well, we mispronounce so many names that <laughs> it's sometimes bad. I feel better if I also give them the spelling to yeah. go along with it. So. so It doesn't do me any good when you tell me the name of the enemies because I'm going to forget two minutes later. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I, guess I, told, uh, I actually told you right before this part. Right? I know. I know. Called. You've got them written down. It's handy. I <laughs> and those ba- I forgot those bombs are called, though. Ba- Wambas or bomb Bobas? They're Bobs. They're called Bobs. Bobs. They're yes. Bobs. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And again, there, uh, we I think uh, uh, many, many parts ago, we kind of mentioned it's like if you don't have bombs in a place you absolutely need them like this, they do a good job of putting those bobs. I wish the original Red Legends though had these things. Oh, I know. Like, I don't know, maybe like when you're facing a King Dodongo, the second boss, oh my and you only had eight bombs, the bobs would have been really nice right there. Yes, they absolutely would. Zelda, like, people don't realize that we are spoiled by Zelda nowadays. Yep. They make it so easy now. Back in the day, when you ran out <laughs> bombs and you were against the boss, you had to go back into Hyrule and get yep. bombs somewhere. Now, I'm just kind of a fan of this puzzle. Sorry, we went off on a tangent. Oh, right it's, there. it's totally I got a little bit upset right I, there for a little while. I mean, we're kind of in this room for a few minutes. So. Yeah, you were killing. <laughs> I do like you know. I like this room too, and the puzzles yep. that go along with this room. It was nice seeing like you saw that boss door right outside of here, but we had to go through this whole puzzle room uh-huh. to uh, fill that hallway with sand so we could actually reach the boss door. Uh-huh. I thought it was uh, just a nice little like last sand puzzle yeah. before you get to the final boss. Now I remember like the first time I played through this game, this is actually one of the dungeons that I had the most difficulty with. Oh, we I won't exactly why. say what dungeons like you know I also experienced experienced difficulty <laughs> with but this one right here Eastern Palace uh, well yeah <laughs> definitely yeah the Eastern Palace is definitely the hardest one in the game handicap of one <laughs> but I mean this dungeon the first time through it was tough it was it was and like I said if you don't have that sand rod upgrade it it becomes considerably tougher now this room I don't really feel was necessary but I love it I just love the sand oh, yeah. all going into a vortex there in the middle just like. I guess it's a nice little walkway. It really before is for the boss. It wasn't necessary, but man, did I love that! It makes for fun, like a a fun like walk up to the uh-huh. boss. You're like, you got to get across this sand platform. You got this, like I said, vortex yeah, uh-huh. bit below you. It felt it felt good. It felt now, important. There's a lot of weight, like a lot of different feelings we have on this area right here. Yes. One, we're glad the boss was back in low roll. Like, oh, I thought it was awesome. Yes, I did like that part going back to low roll in, in the dungeon. Yeah. Here's the thing, like Hilda says, there's no desert. In low roll? Yeah. Well, why is there a big sand pit right here in low roll then? It's not, I know. It's not a desert exactly, but... It looks like a desert to me. You know what's <laughs> weird? is the swamp is right beside it. I know it's separated by a little wall. That's so, all like, I mean, I did love going back to low roll, but it really doesn't make much sense, like, why this little setting right here exists. I also didn't think having, like, a, a plant, like a big giant Agreed. flower, Agreed. Uh, after going through a desert palace, uh-huh. was appropriate. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm glad it wasn't those stupid worms that come out of the ground. Like, it yes. seems like... Oh, I would have hated that. It seems like almost had to bring those stupid things up. Oh, I hate uh, bosses in Link to the Past. So I'm glad we got a different, like, kind of more fun boss. Yeah. But again, the plant-based enemy doesn't really fit with a desert-based dungeon. Uh-huh. But even like, though you know, the swamp but is like, right no, there. Even though you've been dissing I actually did really like this boss. Me this too. This boss is called uh, Zaganaga. I think yeah, that's just a funny correct name. pronunciation. <laughs> but, I mean, I really did enjoy the boss. It just, yep. it really didn't feel right, I guess. No, it didn't. But man, I tell you what, again, having that upgraded sound Oh, rod, definitely. Because you can sit it on can this kill platform. You right. Exactly. You can sit on this platform and just go to town on yeah, it. Yeah, uh-huh. But if you have the un-upgraded Sand rod, you have a strict time limit on how many hits you can get. And in. that's one thing that stinks about facing him this early is that we still only had a master sword, which is oh, still, yeah. in my opinion, a very weak sword when we have it two is. more upgrades we're going to get. And just like, I mean, yeah, you could go to town on him, but it felt like you were going at him forever sometimes with that master sword. It does, especially when you've got some of the uh, other flowers that he shoots coming at you. That energy beam. Thing I love that. that I love that energy you. beam. It looks uh, awesome, but man, mm-hmm. he jacks you with it once or twice. Well, you know, like we got to the point right here, like when we collected so many hearts that it's really not something to worry about. And I was no. trying not to fall to the edge, you know, the yeah. least amount of times that I could or can, whatever. And I, I guess it does. We we kind of mentioned that like Hilda saying they're surrounded by sand. It did turn out to be true because that pit, that little room that the sage was in was totally filled with sand. So uh-huh. mm-hmm. That part at least comes true. But you would think of ruin a painting, like being trapped in the sand. So. so I don't know why uh, Yugo would put it there. I know, right? In the first place. He's so obsessed but, with beauty. But yeah. Uh, all I was, so, I, let's, so let's put this painting behind yeah. some sand right here. I'm no art expert, but that's probably not good. For <laughs> yes, exactly. I was so happy to get Irene back though, because I, I'll be honest, she's one of my favorite side characters in this game, and I missed her little sarcastic comments. Yeah, like it, I didn't miss like you know like every time we would warp somewhere. 
all we would get is like three dots, and that's yeah. all we get. But anyways, we finished out the Desert Palace, and this will go ahead and wrap up part 29 of A Link Between Worlds.